A lot of countries do Christmas meals a little differently around the world, and it came as a little surprise when we learned about the top five most popular dishes around Portuguese homes on the 24th and 25th of December. Hey expats and travelers alike, I'm Josh. And I'm Kaylee with Expats Everywhere, and we've been living in Portugal for over a year now and wanted to celebrate Christmas through food like the Portuguese. We asked both friends and strangers, and here are the five most common dishes and when they're eaten during the holidays. While some of the dishes were surprising, they kind of made sense. Join us as we go around to different restaurants and try these dishes. It's no surprise that Portugal would have bacalhau or cod as a popular Christmas dish. Traditionally, fish was being consumed more than meat during certain religious celebrations. However, they have found a way to not just do one cod dish, but two. How, you might ask? Well, Josh, go ahead and explain the first dish. Okay, bacalhau con turush is the star dish for dinner on Christmas Eve, or in Portuguese, consoada, which comes from the Latin word consolata, meaning comfort. You have cod with a variety of boiled side dishes like potatoes, carrots, and cabbage. The vegetables you use will differ depending on the region, and it's common in the north to have the famous olive oil and vinegar sauce. The way this is prepared makes a lot, so that means that there are a lot of leftovers. Instead of eating the same dish, it's common to prepare leftovers the next day in a dish called hopaveia, which means old clothes. This is typical of Minho, where it remains the main course and not just a starter on Christmas lunch. We went to Abadia for their bacalhau con toros. All right, so we are here, we made a reservation, and actually uh, bacalhau con toros is not on their menu, but we called them and they said they could make it for us special, I guess. So let's go try it. We actually made this dish a while back when we did our seven day Portuguese language challenge, and it was pretty easy to make, but I'm guessing it's gonna taste better here. Yeah. Food is here. We have our fish, potatoes, eggs, carrots, cabbage, an onion. It is a lot of food. I hope C is hungry. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> so this is a ton of fish for 35 euros. Um, this is for two people. I think it can honestly be for four people. I believe we'll definitely be taking this home. Um, it's, it's just such like a warm, comforting dish. Granted, it's probably not as comforting as, as the cabrito, um, but I can still see how this would be a great thing to eat on Christmas Eve. And it's very simple, so I think that's pretty cool too, because I imagine there's a lot of history uh, behind dishes like this when they're so simple, uh, with a lot of salt flavor, which is nice. And then we were told to use ubiquitous amounts of oil across the dish. So we are, and we have some vinegar too, to give it a little, uh, little more flavor. But it's very good. You have to work for it, getting the bones out, but it's nice. It's a lot of food, so he's packing it up for us. And tomorrow, we'll have the Hopa Velia. Yeah? <laughs> Then the next day, we prepared the hopavea, which is common to do for Christmas lunch. It's called this because of the way it looks and the way that the food is all mixed and cut into pieces. All right, hopavea is next. So we're gonna take the leftovers that we had from yesterday. I'm gonna chop it up, prepare it all, and then I'm gonna put it in a skillet, saute it up. I've got a few ingredients to add, but really it's just a lot of leftovers. We are gonna do some boiled eggs. So we're gonna have that in the mix. Let me show you guys that and then we'll taste it and see how it goes. The guy yesterday told us to add a little pity pity in there. I don't think all recipes include pity pity, but we're spicy fans, so we're gonna try it. I actually think I might like this better. Josh added garlic and I do like the pity pity sauce, so we'll see how it tastes. Well, that was pretty easy, I'll say that. And uh, I do like the price, it's free, because we already had the ingredients. And um, yeah, I can't wait to dig in, let's dig in. It's really hot, let's give it a go. I feel like it has more flavors than what we had last night, and I think I like this one better. It's really good, the, 
the pepperiness from the pepper that I added and then also a little bit of the Pity Pity is nice. I think we are gonna try to douse it with a little of this Pity Pity sauce and see how that goes. But look, I mean, I understand why this is such a typical meal, using those leftovers and uh, just keeping it going, it's good. Hot diggity dog, that Pity Pity is magic. Now, let's jump to a popular dessert called habanada. Who doesn't like fried dough and sugar? This is kind of similar to French toast and the origins are of a similar time period from the 15th to 16th century. It was originally tied to Lent as Catholics gave up meat and consumed more bread during that period. They wanted to make use of bread all day, whether stale or fresh. Stale bread is actually better for this dish as it absorbs more of the cinnamon milk custard. It's more common for bakeries to have this dessert during December and early January. So we went to Café Alem de Oro to try this tasty treat. You can eat these for breakfast, as a snack, or as a dessert. It can be eaten at room temperature and can be topped with some sort of syrupy jam that is decided by the restaurant or the host. Some like to use port. This is the cafe we're heading to for something sweet. I'm really excited about this one. This is habanadas, which is kind of like their version of a French toast, and I love French toast. So let's try it and let's see if Sia likes it. I'm sure she will. I'm gonna try the sauce or syrup or whatever it is before getting into it. It does taste like a, not a maple syrup, but like a sweet syrup. Sugary. All right, Sia's already had about half of this one, so it's my turn. Hmm. It's really good, moist, so it's soaked in something. I don't know, we'll have to find that out, but it's moist, and um, the sauce on top, it's got a little bit of a red tint to it, so it's definitely desserty, sweet, and Sia keeps asking for more. It's really good, but dessert for sure. I haven't had mine yet, so it's my turn. Let's go, let's dig in. French toast in the morning. Or should I say Portuguese toast in the morning. The syrup's pretty sweet. There's a little bit of a berry flavor in there. It's very light. It's awesomely fried bread. I mean, what else isn't there to like about it? The next dish is cabrito asado, which is baby goat. Of course, potatoes are involved, and for this dish, we went to a restaurant called Manel Alvish. Lamb is also common to eat, but around Christmas time, the preferred choice is goat. At Manel Alvish, they serve this dish with potatoes, rice, and a creamed spinach. The goat is slowly roasted, which is obvious with how tender it is. Okay guys, so we are at Manel Alvish, and today we are trying the Cabrito Asado, and the restaurant is really nice. It's beautifully decorated for Christmas, and it's quiet right now because we're here for lunch, but you can do lunch or dinner here. Okay, straight out of the oven, still sizzling. Let's try it. Hot. <laughs> Feels hot. All right. Kaylee's definitely right about the texture. My goodness, it's tender. Um, perfect amount of salt. Just, I'm a delicious, warm flavor. It's just warming the body. It's so good. Let's put the camera down so we can eat more. Now back to dessert, which might seem like an odd combo, but it works. It's actually angel hair noodles, but it's sweet and creamy, and it's covered in cinnamon, generally in a pattern like a tree or a star. This dish has an interesting history dating back to the 14th century, as it appears to be influenced from the Moors on the Iberian Peninsula because of the type of pasta. This dish is called alatria, and the creamy custardy taste is similar to a pastel de nata, which makes sense when you look at the ingredients of each. They're very similar. You all know that I like pastel de nata, so I like the flavors of this dish, but the texture was definitely different. And you could tell that from Sia's face when she took her first bite. For this dessert, we went to a restaurant called A Cozina du Manel, which always seems to be a busy place to eat because of the quality of food, the service, and the atmosphere. 
We're at Cozina du Manel and we are going to have a quick lunch and then we're here to try a famous Christmas dessert. And of course Sia has woken up for the dessert. I'm excited to try this one because it has cinnamon and I really like cinnamon. It's a cold dish, so I like that. And it's noodles, but it's very sweet. So you have the sweetness and the cinnamon. It's actually really good. This is like pastel de nata with noodles. Amazing. Last but not least is a dessert that Josh makes fun of me for saying, so I'm gonna let him say it. Bolche, which means king cake. It is believed to date back to the Roman times. The French have probably influenced the current iteration of the king cake since the 19th century. The dough is similar to brioche and it's meant to resemble a crown. Then there's a mixture of dried fruits and such. Similar to the king cake from Mardi Gras in the US, there can be hidden things in the cake like a fava bean and a plastic or porcelain doll. One surprise can signal bad luck and the other good luck. I mean, I'm not gonna tell anyone why fava. It's kind of similar to a fruit cake, and you can see these all over in December from the grocery stores to the cafes. We saw some that were quite inexpensive at the grocery store, but we wanted to be sure to try a good quality one. So for this reason, we went to a popular bakery that always has lines called Confeteria du Bolao. Here, you can buy the whole cake or have them cut off any size piece you want. Then they weigh it, and that's how much you know it will cost. It wasn't cheap, but we were confident that it was a good quality one to try, especially compared to some of the ones that we saw at the grocery stores. We're picking up the bowl of hay at a pretty popular bakery around here. We're not gonna get the whole thing because it's quite big, so we got kind of a big chunk, and now we're in line just paying for it, and then we're gonna go try it. Okay, I've cut a piece off. It was quite easy to cut, so let's see. It's kind of fruity tasting. It's interesting. Not bad. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, not bad, right? Not bad, Zia. But I don't think it's my favorite type of dessert. I can see why it would be festive, Christmassy, though. Cool. You get all the soft bits. I mean, it's similar to a panettone or a fruit cake. Not my favorite. I would rather have the beer version of this like we did last year at Nortada. They had a stout where they actually used bola uh to produce it. And it was really flavorful, fruity notes from these little bits right here. But, okay. All right, so we're making some assumptions here. One thing is we think that this one is a, a really high quality one. We're imagining that you can get others that are gonna be sweeter with lower quality ingredients. This one, it's not too sweet, it has the right sweetness. Valencia agrees. And uh, the, the bread actually, the yeah, the, the cakey part of it is, is really good. That's right, and if you're Portuguese, I want you guys to let us know what your favorite dish is. And if you're a foreigner, tell us which one you can't wait to try. And if you wanna see a video that YouTube knows you're gonna love next, then click right here. Happy holidays, everyone. Now let's get moving. Bye. Bye.